Good morning. We welcome you to God's house this morning. So glad to see all of you as we uh, continue in our Lenten journey. And so as, as we continue in, in the season of Lent, we are going to look at uh, the, the gospel reading. Uh, last week we kind of looked at, at that temptation of, of Jesus. And, and now uh, another uh, well-known uh, story of, of Peter makes this confession of who Jesus is. Uh, and, and then kind of hears uh, what Jesus has come to do, and, and he doesn't really agree with that. And, and so there are many times that, that we kind of uh, wonder, what, what is Jesus really up to? Uh, and, and so we'll unpack that uh, this morning as, as who Jesus really is and, and why he came uh, to, to be on this earth uh, for us. Uh, so we'll look at that more this morning. Uh, before we begin, let's begin the word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, uh, what a privilege it is to be in your house. Uh, as, as we are reminded of what your Son came to this earth to do, uh, to pay the price for our sin, uh, to give us that forgiveness and eternal life. And so there are many opportunity, or times in our lives uh, when we kind of question uh, what is going on, uh, thinking it's not supposed to be this way. Uh, but as we uh, continue to, to look into your word and to, to grow in our relationship with you, uh, we know that, that you have a plan for everything, uh, and we'll work it out uh, to your will and to your good. Uh, and so let us continue to trust in you uh, and who you are. And so just uh, bless our time together. It's in your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand and greet those that are all around you. Welcome all those that are online this morning. Welcome to worship. And we stay standing for our first hymn, Chief of Sinners Though I Be. Make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lenten journey continues toward the cross. It is a journey marked. But suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. Hope in Christ is not for us to shame. Our hope in Christ is strong and living, yet. We have often taken for granted the profound reality of Christ's death for us. We have ignored how weak and ungodly we have been. Still, our Heavenly Father grants us access to His throne of grace to ask for His forgiveness. Let's just take a moment of silence to reflect 
on those statements and just our need for our Savior. Heavenly Father, we have not rejoiced in suffering, but have given up easily. We have lacked integrity and acted shamefully, and we have been scared of life itself. Have mercy upon us and reconcile us back to you so that we may rejoice once more on account of Jesus. just the right time while we were still weak and ungodly, Jesus Christ died for us and reconciled us to God. As a called ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are forgiven and are at peace with God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Oh God, you see that of ourselves we have no strength. But your mighty power defend us from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. So as we finish up here our month of February, I still know it is February, we are, are, are certainly reminded uh, of that steadfast love that God has for us uh, and all that he does for us. Uh, most importantly, how he, he fills our soul uh, with, with things that, that we need to hear and, and, and grow in. Uh, and so we were just reminded of that uh, here from our verse in, in Psalm 107. And so as we finish this month, let us continue to, to put this to memory, uh, and let us say it twice this morning. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love. One more time. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love. For his wondrous works to the children of man. For he satisfies the longing soul, the hungry soul he fills with good things. Psalm 107. Old Testament reading this morning comes from the book of Genesis, 17th chapter. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. For I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. And I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And God said, said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her. And moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Our epistle reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the fifth chapter. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts 
through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son. Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. This time I invite all children to come and join me for a children's message this morning. Good morning. How are we doing this morning? Are you ready for a magic trick? Okay, are you ready to be amazed? My wife is. Look at that face. She knows this can only go one way, and it's down. (laughs) All right, so this week, I printed off how to do magic tricks. So I I read through it, and we're going to do a magic trick, okay? So I have here with me some cards, okay? Okay, they're they're real. Can you touch them, Elias? Do they feel real? Good. Do they feel magic? Well, they're going to turn magic. So the trick is I'm going to have one of you pick a card. You're not going to show me it because I'm going to close my eyes. And then you're going to, you, can, you can show your friends here. And then we're going to put it back in the deck. I'm going to snap my finger. Guess what's going to come up? <laughs> Elias, if you don't, uh, oh, Oliver, if you don't think this is going to work, you have to have positive energy. <laughs> this is pastor, Okay. Have faith in pastor. All right, who wants to pick a card? All right, Oliver. Okay, I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to close my eyes. You pick any card in there, okay? Look first, look. Are they all the same card? Good. I got the right ones then. All right, I'm going to close my eyes. You pick a card. Did you pick one? Okay, good. You want to show them, everyone? You can show the audience. You can show my wife. Okay, did you, did you put it back in? Okay, give me, give me here. Okay, ready? Okay, remember, all I got to do is snap my finger like that, and it's going to be right up here. Okay? Elias? <laughs> ready? Is this your card? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. No, he picked a two of hearts. I snap my fingers and it's supposed to appear. It says right here. I mean, I didn't read three through six, but I I did the last one. It says snap your finger and your card will be revealed to the audience. So what you're saying is I should have read the whole thing instead of just whatever I wanted to read? Yeah. (laughs) But I didn't want to. I had to get to spud basketball games, okay? All right. Well, there is a point to this message, okay? So I just just relax, Carrie. I just... (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I, I know. So, oh boy. Okay, so in a little bit, you are going to hear, hear a story where, where Peter sees Jesus. He, he knows that he is the Christ, okay? We know who Jesus is, right? And, and just after that, Jesus began to, to teach him. This is the first time in, in Jesus' ministry where he tells his disciples that that. What he came to do is, is to suffer, to go to the cross. He's going to be rejected by people, and then he's going to be killed. But on the third day, he will rise again. 
And, and Peter hears this, and guess what? Peter does not like what he hears, okay? I, I didn't really want to read the whole, whole thing, okay? I just wanted to get to the good part of, of how the card is going to be revealed. Apparently, there's some other steps that I needed to take um, to, to get there. And, and that's exactly what, what Jesus is, is reminding all of us, is that sometimes what we need to do is not the easy thing. The easy part for me was to, to read the first part, get some cards, tell the people to, to pick something, and then snap my fingers and it would, it would appear. And that, that kind of goes the same for us. Sometimes being a disciple of Jesus is, is not easy. Okay? Sometimes we will suffer. Sometimes people will make fun of us because we come to church on Sunday or that we go to, to VBS or we go to youth group or that we wear a cross necklace. But we know that, that because Jesus loves us and, and died for us, uh, that he's going to be with us. And so, yeah, it could be very easy for us to, to, to not come to church or to, to give up, to, to go, this is not how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be loved. You know, we're, we're followers of Jesus. But sometimes we have to, to spend more time in his word and to realize that, that he has a plan for us. And, 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 it's, and it's perfect. Because Jesus didn't, I want to go to, he didn't want to go to the cross. You know, he, he kind of said, if there's any other way, God, to, to remove this, I don't have to go to the cross. Please allow it. But, but Jesus did because that's what God called him to do. And we have to do this, the same thing a, as well. And so I'm going to try next time to, to read through um, so I can find the 10. There, there is a 10. You didn't put it in your pocket, did you, Oliver? Because that would have been really, like, I mean, was it this one? Hey, I found it. <laughs> okay, good. Yep, it's, it's on the top now. I win. <laughs> You're right. I did. But remember that, that God has a plan. He, he loves us so much. Uh, and, and Jesus died for all of us. And that's the message we get to, to share with the world, uh, even though sometimes they might not hear it or want to hear it. Um, but we know that that he loves us and, and has died for us. And so let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank and, thank, we thank and praise you for the gift of your son, uh, that he went to the cross to pay for our sins so that we can be forgiven. And we know that sometimes uh, we will do things that uh, the world doesn't want to hear. Uh, and it's going to be hard for us to, to do that. It's not supposed to be that way. Uh, but we know that you are in control and you have a plan and you will share that love uh, through us uh, to the world. So just continue to guide us as we become disciples and continue to be disciples of you. In the name we pray, amen. We pray for Pastor Brett and his card tricks too. Now to respect for the Holy Gospel, I invite you to stand if you are able. And let us say the verse together. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and others one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And he called to him the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. 
For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For what can a man give in return for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We continue with our next hymn, Come Follow Me, the Savior Spake. Mercy and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who willingly went to the cross to die for us, to rise for us, so that we can be forgiven and have life with Him. Be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. Well, th- this certainly is, is another familiar text that, that we uh, have heard uh, a lot before. It's that, that story where, where Jesus, of course, asked the disciples, well, well, who do people say that I am? And, and his disciples, you know, are, are answering, saying, well, well, some say, you know, John the Baptist, to Elijah the prophets. Then he asked that question again, well, well, who do you say that I am? And, and Peter, speaking for the disciples, says, well, you are the Christ, Hey, this is 
a while now that the disciples have been walking with Jesus. They have seen him do things, and, and so they are confident. Peter is confident in knowing that this guy is special. He has come to, to be that Savior for us. So this is the, the first time now that Jesus, in his ministry, tells the disciples what the Savior must actually do. Hey, well, the Son of Man must, must suffer many things. He will be rejected by the chief priest and the law givers. He will be killed and the third day rise again. Well, this is not what Peter has in mind for his Savior. This is not what it's supposed to be, Jesus. So he pulls him aside and rebukes Jesus. Jesus has other things in mind. He says, you are thinking about the things of, of man and not the things of God. God has a plan. And this is, must happen for it to be fulfilled. Jesus began to teach. And, and that's the, the thing here that, that we have to always come back to, that Jesus is always teaching. Sometimes we think that we know everything. Heck, we've been to, to Sunday school. We got our confirmation diploma. I don't need to be taught anymore. But then we have those instances in our lives we sometimes ask the question, it's not supposed to be like this, Jesus. Jesus says, yeah, you're right. But here, let me begin to teach you again about what it means to be a disciple. I have, I have never, and I hope, to never have to have the opportunity or the instance in my life where someone tells me that I have a certain amount of time to die before I die. Because in, in that moment, things change. Okay, priorities change. They shift. And maybe things that you thought needed to, to happen, leveling off an area in your yard aren't nearly as important as spending time with family. Having a, a death diagnosis in your life changes things. It changes how you think about things. And this is exactly what happens to Peter and the disciples. This is the first time now that they hear what will happen to their teacher. He says, I will be killed. We hear that statement, probably going through Peter's mind of, it's not supposed to be like this, Jesus. Have you ever struggled with God? Questioned his ways in your life? Certainly, if you've had those times, those conversations with God can become very passionate. And I've, I've asked that, that question many times of God. Is this supposed to be like this? And the big one for me that became life-changing was when I started to wrestle with the idea of becoming a pastor. You want me to uproot my life, my, my family, to go back to school? It's not supposed to be like this, God. But then as I wrestled with him, as I, I got into his word again, Jesus began to, to teach me, and, and God began to teach me through his word and point me in the direction of, of what 
his plan for me and his life was. For when we rebuke God, when we say it's not supposed to be like this, God, it's a good time to stop and look and listen. Because in, in those moments, God is asking us to see things not as we want them to be, but as they really are in his kingdom. You see, Mark does not record or Peter's words after he rebukes Jesus. I think Mark wants us to, to put ourselves in, in his shoes. We know what such resistance would sound like and, and would look like. Suffering shouldn't happen, not to God, not to God's people. But the question we sometimes forget to think about is why not? Why should this suffering not happen to Jesus? Perhaps it should not happen because Peter trusts the religious authorities that they would never do such a thing. They would never reject Jesus? Don't they see who he is? One expects the church to act faithfully, to abide by the ways of God, to treat others with love and respect, and to reach out with the gospel. Yet the church does not always act in the way that God desires. The church is made up of sinners, of you and me. Sometimes even the church starts to think of going in the ways of man and not the ways of God. Sometimes when, we, when that happens, we need to, to change the way we understand the church and how the church works in the world. That's what we've been kind of going through in the book of Titus. There are false teachings out there. There are false teachers, even in churches and in leadership positions. And what does Paul tell Titus to tell the people of Crete? Get back to the word. Get back to to God's word. Have that as your benchmark. Don't put people up on a pedestal. Don't put an an institution on a pedestal. But put God's word on on a pedestal. It also made me think of, maybe it shouldn't happen because Peter thinks he understands Jesus and and who he is. That that Christ should never have to suffer in such a way. To be the Christ means that you are the anointed one, the Savior, who will make all things right. Not by dying. Not being rejected. God would never abandon his anointed one, would he? He would deliver him, he would rescue him, he would save him, but he would not let him suffer. So I think for Peter, he, he needs to start to figure out, and maybe change his whole understanding of, of God and how God works in the world. And sometimes God works through suffering through being rejected to point people to him. And the last thing that, that I thought about for, for Peter is Peter has followed Jesus. He has left everything to be a part of his group, to be his disciple. He has gone all in. And this is not just his future Jesus is talking about, but it is our future as well. We believe in him. We we follow him. We want everything to go well. We need it to go well because maybe that is all that we have. For this to happen, it might mean I need to change my whole understanding of what it means to be a disciple, to be a follower of Jesus. 
The death diagnosis from our Lord changes the way that we see the world. The church gathers as sinners, constantly needing to confess our sins to each other and to God. But also the Messiah is a savior of of sinners, enduring the punishment of our sin to the point of death and then rising on the third day to rule over the strange and maybe complicated kingdom of God. Discipleship, being a follower of Jesus, isn't an easy road. There will be suffering. There will be rejection. It is a loss of life. It's a dying to ourselves and to, to a carrying of our cross. That's what Jesus said after he makes this rebuke over Peter. Once again, teaching us and teaching his disciples what it means to really be a follower of me. If you want to be my disciple, deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. It means those questions of it's not supposed to be this way need to be put aside. Because it's not about how we think. But it's about God and God's plan. And yes, we we don't maybe understand fully why there needs to be suffering. Why do we need to go through this? But God's plan is perfect, brothers and sisters. It is good. He takes the bad to make it good. And sometimes through people's sufferings, it brings others to see who he is. And that's exactly what what Paul is reminding us in our epistle reading, you know, that, that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces what? Hope. Hope in knowing that this is all temporary. Hope that knowing that Jesus paid the price for the sin of the world. Hope in knowing that one day we will be with him forever. So brothers and sisters, I, I, I again encourage you to be taught by Jesus. Spend time in his word. And during those times when when you are wrestling with that question, it's not supposed to be like this. Or or why is it happening as you're struggling with God? As it becomes passionate, look to him. Because he will lead you where you need to be. And yes, that road that he leads you might be bumpy, it might be ugly, it might be hard. But he's never going to leave you alone. For every road that I have been on that's been hard and difficult, I've never done it alone. I've done it with brothers and sisters in Christ. And so as you look around this room this morning, these are the ones who will walk with you. Those will be the ones who, who point you maybe to God's word. We'll pray with you. And we'll wrestle along with you to see the plan that God has for you. Because as we know, yes, Peter didn't agree with this plan for Jesus. But this plan needed to happen. And Peter one day saw it. 
and then began to proclaim it to the world. So brothers and sisters, hold on to him. Hold on to his word. And continue to be taught by him. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now continue in our service by joining together and singing our next hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. Let us stand if you are able. joined together in confessing the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We join together in the prayers of the church. Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer attend. Lord Jesus Christ, be merciful, mercifully present among all those who suffer 
leading them to the hope that is only in you. Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer attend. Lord Jesus Christ, soften our hearts to all those who would proclaim as our enemies. Remind us that we are weak and ungodly. Bring to our remembrance that you have died for all people. Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer attend. Lord Jesus Christ, on the cross, you took on our pain and punishment and death. Bring your comfort to all those who are suffering in grief. Comfort them with the profound reality that you not only died, but rose from death and will raise us from the dead on the last day to eternal life. Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer attend. Lord Jesus Christ, bring your strength and hope to all those who struggle with mental illness. Help them find the support they need. Remove the stigma around mental illness from our churches and communities. To all those in deepest need, bring your peace and joy. Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer attend. Lord Jesus Christ, grant that the nations and peoples of the world might live in peace. Put an end to all violence and war. Lead us to be the first to beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks. Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer attend. Lord, look with favor upon all who are sick, injured, and recovering. We especially pray for those that are in our Trinity family, that are listed in our bulletin, and those whom we now lift up to you in our hearts. Have mercy upon them and lead them out of their suffering to hope. Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer attend. Lord Jesus Christ, you give us so much to rejoice in, especially those who celebrate a birthday this week. For Sam, Reed, Pat, Chad, and Joan. Lord Jesus, we commend all of these people and situations into your hands. For you have promised to hear our prayers and intercede for us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We be seated as we offer up our offerings and tithes. And during this time, we um, will pass the plates around, uh, and, and you can offer up your offerings to that. Uh, and during this time, we just have you reflect on our uh, offering video for today. I invite you to stand if you are able. Let's join together in prayer. 
Before we do that, I skipped over a line, and so I want to make sure that we also lift up Cade, Travis, and Lindsay, uh, who have birthdays this week as well. And so let us uh, join together in praying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us join together in saying our sending prayer. Be reminded that certainly there are times in our lives where we question, we, we struggle with God, we, we wonder it's not supposed to be this way. And, and there are many out there that, that are asking those same questions and, and going through that. And we have the wonderful opportunity to, to come alongside those and, and point them to God's word, to teach them of who God is and what God has sent his son to do for the world, to offer that forgiveness and life. And so as we pray this, pray for those that need to hear that, that message and to maybe have us walk with them. And we pray, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul for thee. And may I ever do my part to win that soul for thee. Now receive our Lord's benediction. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. We'll look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We conclude with our final hymn, Glory Be to Jesus. for just a couple announcements. Just a few things to draw your attention to. Uh, we continue in our season of Lent, uh, which means we have our Wednesday uh, midweek services at 7.15, and so come and join us as we continually look at uh, Psalm 41 uh, and, and the mercy and, and gracious God that we have uh, who has given his son to die for us. Uh, and so continue. Uh, you are welcome to come and join us uh, for those. Also, the youth is selling butter braids, uh, so there's a sign-up uh, form out in the narthex there. They're $13. They will be delivered uh, the week of, of Easter. You can come pick them up uh, actually on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, or, or Easter uh, Sunday. Uh, and so uh, that's a fundraiser to go for our youth that are going uh, to the National Youth Gathering uh, next summer. Uh, and then also Easter lilies. If you would like to purchase an Easter lily uh, in memory or honor of a loved one or family member, uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board there. Those are $14, uh, and we'll have them here for, for Easter. Uh, and so that is all that I have. All right, just a couple of announcements. Um, the first is that we are having our third annual Trivia Night, um, and that is coming up Saturday, April 13th. Um, so start gathering your teams. Registration is either $20 a person or for a team of six, it's $100. Um, Cody Nelson and I are writing the questions this year, so gather from that what you may. Um, but we would love to have you join us for that. It's also a fundraiser for the National Youth Gathering trip. Um, at youth, we are having Nerf Night on Friday, March 22nd at St. Andrews. So if you would like to um, participate in that, let me know. 
Our annual family bowling day is coming up on Sunday, March 10th. What better way to spend daylight savings than bowling? Um, so everyone is invited to join us from that for that. We'll meet here at 11 for lunch, and then we'll go to Sunset Lanes um, for bowling. And then our Easter extravaganza this year is taking on um, a little bit different look. We are also adding a community brunch to it. So on Saturday, March 23rd, um, join us from 9.30 to 11.30 for brunch, extravaganza. Crossing my fingers, we can have an Easter egg hunt outside this year. Um, so make sure to join us for that and also invite your friends and neighbors. All right, have a great rest of your day. Enjoy the, the beautiful fall-like weather and spring-like weather. I don't know what it is. I mean, it probably is going to be like when shorts, Emily, for Easter extravaganza. Um, otherwise, there might be six inches of snow or six feet of snow. Um, who knows? Uh, but in, enjoy this day uh, and just be reminded uh, of the love that God has for us, uh, that he walks with you uh, and, and wants what's best for you. And, and sometimes that might be a little difficult uh, to, to, to go through, but, but he walks with you uh, and he gives you that love and forgiveness uh, each and every day. And so hold on to that uh, and have a great rest of your day. Look forward to greeting you in the back.